This episode is brought to you by Fiverr. More on them later in the video. Yay! We're back in the workshop! If you've been following along on my videos lately, you've seen that I've been renovating an apartment. And I haven't really made anything in this space in almost a year. That's all about to change though, because today we're gonna make a really cool project that not only contains woodworking, but also a bunch of 3D printing. Okay, so you might remember that a while back we made these awesome assortment cases. Made out of wood with a bunch of 3D printed parts. And inside, there's these assortment bins that are also 3D printed. These lock into the grid system in the bottom of the case. Close it up, lock the 3D printed latches. Turn it upside down and nothing is moved. And man, I'm just in love with this system. I've printed hundreds and hundreds of these boxes by now. I made a bunch of these cases and I use them for everything. As a matter of fact, I've also been using these cases to take screws and tools and all that sort of stuff with me to the apartment that we're currently renovating and I've been using those to store all that stuff. There's only one problem. They just end up laying around everywhere and they're always sort of in the way just like any other toolbox would be. Like for instance, I've got one over here with all of my screws, just like randomly in the windowsill here. And while that is probably the most accessible one, there's one over here underneath the screws. And then the rest of them are just piled up down here. As you can see, definitely not ideal. So what I would like and what we're gonna build today is sort of a system that organizes these organizer boxes into like a tool cart with drawers that these can live in. So everything is super easily accessible and I don't have to deal with random stuff being collected on top of these or multiple of these being stacked on top of each other that you need to like reshuffle them to get access to the top. And you know what? Actually, this project is basically gonna be a combination of a couple of other projects that I've done earlier. They're actually all located right here. You might remember that I made this huge assortment tower with a bunch of rainbow colored boxes. This is super easy if you wanna just grab a case and take that case with you, but it's a little cumbersome if you want access to the inside of this. All of that works pretty well for things that you don't need access to like all the time. The other thing that I made is this assortment cabinet with drawers that have these boxes inside them all these boxes live in the drawers permanently, not really made to take anything with you, at least not more than one or two. Super easily accessible all the time, but this whole thing, not particularly easy to take with you on a job site. Lastly, this cart, and this is actually a pretty old project, back when I used to have all my tools inside of these Sortimo L boxes. This is basically just a cart with drawers that have a lucky feature for these L boxes. You pull out the box, open it up, take what you need, and put it back. This is sort of a combination between these two projects. So essentially, we'll build a smaller version of this that instead of holding the L boxes, we'll hold our own assortment cases. As a matter of fact, you can already see that I've cut out all the parts for this project. I've cut all these out out of one sheet of 50 mil poplar plywood. And for all you Americans out there that have to deal with both inches and Fractions, 50 millimeter is the equivalent to 1930 seconds. So there you go. Because if you want to build this project or any of my other projects, like these three the assortment bins, the assortment cases, the assortment cabinet, or any of the other stuff, all of that is available to download on my website, which is alch.shop. All right, moving on. So the frame will be 50 millimeters and the drawers don't need to be as strong. They are going to be nine millimeters. Six of those for six cases. Let's start by assembling the frame itself. Okay, now to be smart and save a little bit of time in assembly later, I've marked up and pre-drilled all the hole locations for all the drawer slides where they're gonna be mounted to the sides. The drawer slides that I'll be using are these super inexpensive ones. They just have one wheel on each side and they roll in. They're actually the same ones that I've used in this cabinet here, and they work just fine. So now that all the holes are drilled, which is much easier to do laying flat on the table than on the inside of the cabinet, trying to get everything straight. And we don't have to worry about that later on. Before I attach these though, we're gonna do one last thing, and that is to create some handles on the top of this, because I wanna be able to carry this 
up the three flights of stairs into the apartment. We're gonna use this. We'll start off by drilling a couple of holes in this thing. Just like that. Do the same thing to the other one. Don't ask me why this one has three holes and how to turn these two holes into an actual useful handle. We'll just draw a couple of lines between the top points and use jigsaw to cut the thing out. Huh? <laughs> Not super comfortable to hold onto though. So we'll just put a little tiny radius on it. And it turns out that if you do it twice, you end up with two holes as handles. And if you do it four times, you end up with four. These two pieces will be attached to these two side pieces They'll act as both a brace and they're there so the space on top of this, we're gonna have a little compartment on the top, can be used with these boxes. So we'll attach these to the side pieces, we'll pre-drill some holes with a nice countersunking drill bit, a little dab of glue, and then permanently attach the whole thing together. It's time to attach all of these drawer slides to the sides before we start assembling the big pieces into a box. See how nice that is to not have to do it later? And we're ready to assemble this thing. And the pieces that we previously attached to the top here can act as a nice stop block, both the back and for this front piece. And I like to pre-drill all the holes with one of these countersinking drill bits. That way the wood doesn't split and everything comes out nice and flush. Next up is the bottom. And we've got a box. Moving on. Mwah. Next up is what we can call the top, which is really just the bottom of the compartment that's gonna be on the top. That essentially is this whole box done. We just need to put on some wheels. Mwah. But hey, I just wanna interrupt myself super quickly to talk about what goes into creating a build plan from a project like this one. Because what you guys see on my website, which you can download and use to build these sort of projects, is far different from what I see, because this is my entire cut list build plan instructions for this entire build. What I normally have to do after building a project like this is that I first note all the small details and changes that I wanna do after having built it once, do all those changes in the 3D model, and take that 3D model and create a build plan out of it with cut lists and dimensions and all that, whatever you need to build it. Now, all that just takes a ton of time and it's not necessarily my favorite part of the job. And that's why I'm super excited to tell you guys about today's sponsor, Fiverr. So yes, this is an ad for Fiverr and they've sponsored this video and they've given me a budget to use on their site. So in case you're not familiar with Fiverr, it's basically a website that connects you with freelancers that can offer all sorts of digital services. Think for instance, music producers, website creators, 3D modelers, video editors, all sorts of other cool stuff. So I ask myself what sort of services would be most helpful for me to create a better product for you guys. And what I landed on is that I want to get two things. I wanted help creating a better step-by-step -step assembly guide and I wanted some nice pictures of what I made for my website. So I jumped onto Fiverr, browsed around a little bit to see if I could find someone that had a style that I liked. The first guy I found was called Priyam Priyankara. <laughs> really sorry if I'm saying that name wrong. Super awesome dude. I reached out to him and asked him if he could help me out creating that assembly guide. He said, yep, no problem. We agree on our price. And in case you're curious, he ended up charging me $238 for the whole thing. Now, this is what I sent him. I basically just sent him hand sketches of whatever this is. These are sort of the assembly steps with all the step-by-step -step and where to assemble the screws and everything. And this is what he sent me back. So he's basically created everything from a cut list with all the parts, all the screws are included, like step-by-step -step instruction in what order to assemble everything, what sort of screws to use where, and then just in general, a really detailed 12-page document with a ton of steps that should be very easy to follow. Now for the second guy, did the same exact thing, browsed around a little bit until I found someone with the style that I like. This time it ended up being Pixel Loop CG a 3D render artist, awesome guys, super responsive. I sent him a 3D model of what I had here and I asked him to create renders of different variation, different poses with the drawers open, closed, cases and all sorts of stuff. We ended up agreeing on $100 for seven different renders and before we even started, he was willing to jump on a quick Zoom call, which was 
super easy to do straight in the app itself. And while we're chatting on Zoom, we agreed on all the angles, the different poses. In some cases, you even have to move some of the bits and pieces of the model around. And when I sent back, I'm super happy with. Just look at these pictures. Like the quality difference between this and what I'm currently using on my website is just night and day. I think this looks really good. So if you want to check out the result of what these guys delivered, you can go to my website and check that out. Now you can head over to fiverr.com slash ALCH to check out all the cool services that they offer. And with the code ALCH, you can also get 10% off your next order. And we've got a cool little cart. Hey, considering already how good this looks and how easy this was to build, I think this is gonna turn out pretty well. And naturally, we'll need some drawers for this. Right, now for the drawers, the sheets that we've cut out earlier, onto these, we need to attach the remaining part of the drawer slides. Pretty simple, these just get screwed onto the back of the board and then we're left with something looking like this. So by using the longer drawer slides like this, we'll be able to extend the door far enough out so that the whole case comes out of the box. But we need some way of making sure that the case stays securely attached to the drawer itself. And for that, you guessed it, I 3D printed a whole bunch of parts. These corner pieces have basically the same geometry in the bottom here as the corner pieces on the cases themselves. So the geometry in the bottom there should index pretty nicely on the bottom of these corner pieces, making sure everything is really well held in place. My thinking is one in each corner, slide this on. And once everything is nicely aligned, we can attach the screws all four pieces in all four corners. I should be able to lift it back up. Ha! And this thing clicks in. And it's not going anywhere. Because that's the important part. I want to be able to securely have this attached to the drawer. But if I want to pull it out and take the case with me, that needs to be easy as well. Cool. Do this five more times. And then we can assemble all the parts into our frame. Now, the nicest drawer slides, but they definitely do the job here. Okay. And last but not least, case number six. Ha! Doesn't this look awesome? Ha <laughs> ha! I just love the way the different colored cases look. I mean, pretty happy about this. I should be able to easily open the whole thing. The whole case extends fully, open it up, super easy access, close it back up. Ha! I also really like that the lid stays open and then you just close it. But there's one question that remains because there's usually one thing that's super annoying about tool carts and other things to have drawers. And that is that if you open up too many drawers at the same time, Oh, right, the whole thing tips over. <laughs> and although they're pretty well attached, I think that would probably end in disaster. But I've got a solution for that. For those of you who have seen the assortment cabinet that I made, that one right there, we'll have somewhat of an idea of what's gonna happen right now. Because while you weren't looking, I've attached an additional piece to the back on the inside of the cabinet here. And I went out and got one of these concrete paving stones, which are really heavy, but also really, really cheap. For that assortment cabinet, I cast these myself out of concrete. And I'm sure you know where this is going. The idea is that I should be able to, oh God, this is heavy. That thing is in its little pocket. And with a couple of screws, We'll make sure that it just won't be able to slide back and forth on its own. Install all of these again. And I have not tested this before, but let's see if it works. It's one, two, three, four. And these are all pretty heavy. Five. Hey! <laughs> that does not look like it's supposed to work. All right. And 
Now, last but not least, what to do in the top compartment here. Well, either you can just leave it open. It's a great place to put down some tools, whatever you're working on, but I figured this would be a great place to put some organizers. So I've yet again printed out a whole bunch of these base grids. These are the same base grids that live in the bottom of all the assortment cases and all the drawers I've got like this. And these are what allows the bottom of these boxes to register in here. Now, this is also why we had to install the two extra side bits here so that the dimensions add up and everything lines up perfectly. So now we can have big ones, small ones, doesn't matter, or any other combination of boxes. Now what's left to do is glue all this in place. Then I'll take the whole thing to the apartment. Guess I'll have to carry it up those three flights of stairs. Good thing this thing is heavy. I could have taken that massive chunk of concrete out of there. I wanted to be lazy, so now I have to do it hard way. All right, this heavy thing is in here. Now it's time to fill it up. So let's go hunting for cases that are all over the place here. There's one here with a bunch of stuff on it. There's the second one. Ah, the third one is conveniently under a bunch of stuff and some headphones. Uh, whoop. Wood screws, whoa, heavy. More wood screws and other stuff. Some bits, tools cutting blades, stuff that's quite convenient, lugs, wall anchors, they all go in here. Ha! I quite like this color theme as well. Now, obviously, here comes the test. Real life situation, all these cases with except the bottom one is full, and they're pretty heavy. What happens? I'm just going for it here. Ha! Doesn't this just look super weird? With all of them just hanging out like that? Remember, if you want to build this or any of my other projects, you can head over to alch.shop, pick yourself up some 3D files and build plans. Also, I'm curious to know what you guys think about these sort of videos again, some 3D printing, some building, and not just renovating. Do you prefer this kind of content, a mix of both, or do you prefer the renovation series? Let me know down below. All right, and now to finish things off super quick, it's actually been a couple of weeks and I've had plenty of time to use this thing and gotta say, I absolutely love it. It's just awesome to have everything easily accessible. And like, I filled up the top with a bunch of stuff that I use all the time. One quick note though, is that when I built this, I unfortunately used really crappy plywood that was pretty warped. And now I've never had this problem with any of my other builds that use the same exact construction, but this time around, since the sides were bent, they sort of bowed out a little bit and I didn't really pay attention to that. So sometimes on the middle ones, the drawer slides would sort of fall out out of their tracks because the distance in the middle was wider because of the bent wood. To fix this, I've just attached another strip of wood to the side to stiffen the whole thing up. Now it works great. All right, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you so much to Fiverr for sponsoring this video. Remember, you can head over to fiverr.com slash A-L-C-H to check out what they've got to offer. And with code A-L-C-H, you'll get 10% off your next order. 